and other people feel that way. So I felt as though going in to not address that, it's like the elephant in the room. I, I can't, I have to, um, I can't ignore it. So that I was a little bit like on the fence about beforehand thinking, uh, how do I, how do I even broach this topic? However, in fact, I, I interviewed, uh, Ray Seahorn. I'm not going off track, believe it or not, but I interviewed Ray Seahorn who, uh, plays Kim Wexler on the show, Better Call Saul, which is the prequel to, uh, Breaking Bad. And I was interviewing her a week or two before I talked to Joe Montana. And I even told her about it. I don't remember why we started talking about it. I think we were talking, we were talking about Al Pacino possibly. And I told her like, this, I have to bring this up. And she was like laughing, thinking that is the hardest thing to do. And, um, it sort of was. And in the moment I was like, okay, gotta do it. I'm going in. And I asked him about it and he, he answered it honestly. And, you know, I have to believe that I'm not the first person to think about that when talking to him. So hopefully he's prepared to talk about it. And he was. He said we had to say, and I didn't argue with him about it. I didn't bash the movie in front of him. Um, this is Scratch Your Own Itch, the one show that delivers the conversations that we're afraid to share, but we need to. This show is all about creating a life worth living. I'm Logan Tyler Nelson, and I'm your host. So you're going to hear conversations with creators and entrepreneurs talk about what they do, their current and past traumas, how they became who they are, and what they are truly curious about. This is the show where we talk about the things we think about a lot, but need to talk about more. Please take note that this show is not a substitute for actually creating a life worth living because this show will stir your beliefs, make you question what it means to create a life worth living. So my promise to you is to always give you one question to answer for yourself today to start turning your dreams into reality. My curiosity question for you is, have you ever wondered what it would be like to hang out with some of the most influential people that have ever set foot on this planet? Okay, so let me set the tone. You need people, whether it's co-founders, mentors, family, or friends who will challenge you and make you better, thereby raising your average or maybe helping you maintain or have a high standard for yourself. So many entrepreneurs or creative artists strive to be the smartest people in the room on every issue. But the thing is, when you're the smartest person in the room, you're kind of hurting yourself. There's no growth that's happening. There's just stagnant energy. You know what it's like to just kind of feel bored with with something or an activity. As an entrepreneur or creative artist, you have too much at stake to let this go unaddressed. If someone is bringing you down, maybe bringing you down on your average, you have to reduce his or her involvement in your life. And I know that's hard to do. But not doing so may hinder your growth and your success. So, If any of this is resonating with you, then this episode for you, because I'll tell you what, if you've ever heard of names like Joe Montanga or Ed Asner, Damon John, Sharon Stone, Christina Aguilera, Elizabeth Moth, Seth Rogen, Kevin Hart, Uma Thurman, or Curtis Armstrong, you're in for a real treat because today I have a person who has not only hung out with these people, but regularly talks to these people on in-depth conversations one-on-one that are so much deeper than just a quick press release on their latest movie. So I am super excited to bring in attention to Kara Maya Robinson, 
who or Kara Mayer Robinson, who is the host of a really famous podcast. It's totally different from the typical interviews that you feel or see on a regular basis where you just pull up a YouTube channel, the video, and you go, oh, nice, that's cool, let's see what they're doing. And they do this little 13-minute uh, quick interview on what they do and what they're doing with their new movie. And uh, it's it's not as deep as what her podcast delivers. So without further ado, please give a huge warm welcome to the one and only Kara Mayer Robinson. Thank you, Logan. That's a cool introduction, I must say. Uh, very nice to hear you doing the introduction as we're recording, because thats I don't think that's the norm. I think most podcasters will record the intro either before or but usually after. So thank you. I enjoyed that. Oh. And it's, it's great to be here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so I'm pumped for this because... Like you're, uh, first of all, I know that you have a background a little bit in psychotherapy and uh, and it, it's so, it's it just makes so much sense when I listen to your podcast. I'm like, gosh, she, she asked deep questions that most, I bet public, public relations uh, people would be like, just super scared to talk about. <laughs> um, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, because... <laughs> Uh, you know, there's uh, intellectual property and whatnot and, and stuff like that. And there's things that people that are really famous that they can say and they can't say. So um, I'd really like to, I kind of like to start the show with um, kind of reverse engineering how you got to where you got to and, and scratching your own itch to me is by, you know, maybe some problem that you had in your life where, you know, you, you solved it and you figure out a way to kind of systematize it and solve it for other people. So when I say that to you, how did you get to where you got to today by scratching your own itch? Okay, great question. And I would say it's probably multi-layered because I took a lot of turns before I ended up where I am today in terms of career. So you're right, I was a therapist, but that was not the first thing that I was. Um, when I was growing up, I kind of figured I'd be in TV and film production because I've always been like very into TV and movies, love them, love all of it. So I took a little turn in college and it's kind of a funny story, but I won't go into the whole long detail of it, but I ended up accounting uh, as an accounting major. And so I did that for a very brief stint and I knew right away that was not my personality, didn't want to do it. So I went to grad school, became a psychotherapist and that eventually led me into writing sort of like self-help and parenting advice. And then I started interviewing actors. And shortly after, I realized this is totally for me. So my podcast is a combination of like my therapy background and my fascination with TV and movies. So that's how I landed here. Um, so many little steps along the way, but I, I don't think I would say it was like such a big personal problem necessarily that started it. But I will say that when I was a journalist, and I still am a journalist, but I write less now that I'm doing the show. Um, but at a certain point, it was just clear that print media, which was my outlet, uh, was drying up. It was dying. So I had to figure some other way to do what I love to do. And so that's why I decided to start the podcast. I felt like this is a great way for me to use my therapy skills and talk to people in depth, which is what I love, love, love to do. And let everybody listen to like the whole thing instead of taking little snippets and plugging them into a, a written profile. So that's how the, the podcast was started. I hope that answers the question. I, it was kind of long winded. Yeah, no. Uh, so it was perfectly answered. Thank you. Uh, I, I, you know, it's funny because, um, you know, actually on your website, Titus Burgess, for example, said you were a therapist. Now that makes perfect sense to me. I bet you were wonderful, uh, end quote. And, and it's like, could you kind of expound about how you actually get these people like Titus Burgess, like Tim Gunn, Jesse Eisenberg on your show, even though, yeah, like you kind of gave us the insight about like, you know, studying journalism and also being in um, public relations. But, but I mean, really like to ask these people, I want to go like kind of behind the scenes and how long it takes to even sometimes like, like maybe you send out an email and the actual interview doesn't start for another year. You know what I mean? Going to the, that kind of story. 
Yeah, I think a lot of people would be interested in hearing this too, as a matter of fact, because I do get asked that question quite a bit. A lot of people are like, how do you get all these huge names on your show? Like, I don't even get it. But it's not just like magic. Really, the bottom line is that I have been a journalist for years. And so I have a lot of contacts. I've interviewed a lot of people already. So for example, I started out with Tim Gunn. He was my first episode for Really Famous. And I had already interviewed him before for uh, in a couple of places, actually. I interviewed him for a piece that I wrote in the New York Times. Uh, about his Sunday routine. So he walked me through like what he does on a typical Sunday. And so when I did that interview with him, I was at his apartment for I think close to three hours. And so it was such a great interview and we connected like it was amazing. And he loved it. I loved it. I mean, I shouldn't speak for him, but it seemed like we really both had a great time. So, um, of course, it was just a smallish piece that the New York Times was going to print. So I could only use little pieces of it. But the conversation was so in depth and so amazing that I think he and I felt connected after that. So when it was time to start my podcast, I went back to him and I asked him if he would, you know, it's brand new, but if he would like to be a guest, I'd love to have him on the show. And he happily did it, which I had no idea. I was super nervous to ask him. Like, I, you know, who wants to ask a big question like that? It would have been easier just to be like, um, not do it and start with somebody who, who maybe is a little bit less famous. Uh, but I decided to just go for it and it paid off. So I did the same thing for a lot of other celebs who I had met before. So Damon John, same situation. I reached out to him again. I told him, guess what? I'm starting a podcast and I'd love to have you on. And he said yes. So that's sort of how it started. Um, again, it's not, no like fairy dust or anything. A lot of it had to do with the fact that I had been a journalist for so long and they knew a lot of the people who I had interviewed know that they can trust me, that I'm not one of these like gotcha people who's just trying to pull some uh, soundbite out for whatever um, tabloid or even not a tabloid. I'm, you know, authentic and tr and I guess they can trust me. So building good relationships over a long time paid off. So that's part of it. So that's how it started. And then, of course, you need to sustain it. So I can't only interview people who I have interviewed before and who already know who I am and will you know, happily work with me again. So I have to um, I had to keep going out to their publicists or whatever and talk to them and show them what I have done and where I've been published. And they judge for themselves. So that's part of it. And then the other part is that other publicists have come to me because they know my work. So that's kind of the, the behind the scenes, I guess. Um, to get a little bit more into the nitty gritty, the timing, like how long it will be before, you know, when the, I first make contact with somebody and when I actually do the interview, that's like varies across the board. So it could be, uh, it's usually not that long, actually, but it could be two months in advance of the actual interview, or it could be like a few days. So that's what happened recently. Like I was uh, speaking to a rep last week about the actor Peter Herman, who is on the show Younger. And like suddenly they wanted to book it and it was less than a week. So that happens too. Um, it varies. Does that, does that cover it? Yeah, you did a, a, an amazing job. It's just wow. Like, wow. I, I think it's so cool that, uh, that you shot for the moon. Like, you really shot for the moon when you started this. You're just like, you know what? I'm going to go for a really, uh, I want to get, you know, some of the most influential people that have ever stepped on this planet. And uh, you're doing it and you continually do it. And so I want to acknowledge you for that, like, that bravery and that courage to, to go after it. <laughs> and it's not easy. Like you were saying, like, it's so easy to just not do it and not reach out and, and I mean, uh, that's, I think, where it's kind of like uh, the Roger Bannister four-minute mile thing happens where everyone's saying, like, no, no one can do four-minute mile. Like, that's not happening. The second he did it, though, it mm -hmm. brought inspiration to so many people. And all of a sudden, so many other people started doing a four-minute mile. So it's like, for me, you're kind of that Roger Bannister right now that I hope that uh, hopefully I can I can kind of like because I mean I'm in the same position I, I would love to start interviewing these uh, these people that just bring everybody else up you know what I mean 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just a reach for the stars kind of person. I think part of that is what I've always, I've always kind of like, not that I'm a dreamer, but I set my eye on something and I'm like, oh, that'd be amazing. Let me try to do it. I don't really want to have regrets in life that I didn't do anything because I think that's more common to have regrets about what you never tried or what you never did less common to regret something that you did and it didn't work out. So, you know, and that's also related to whole, the whole concept of failure. And honestly, failure is one of the greatest gifts you can get because it teaches you so much and it's really like living a full life. You need to get out there and fall on your face a bunch of times. And, you know, for me, I am, I get rejected all the time. I think also people don't realize how many people also say no to being on my show. Right. So for as many yeses I get, there are extra no's and you just have to kind of build a thick skin and not take it personally and not start to, you know, worry. Oh no, is it because the podcast isn't any good or, you know, is it me? Do they not like me? It's just not even about that. There are a million other reasons why somebody won't do the show. And that's just part of the game. Are you someone who's trying to build your online presence and you're finding out that it takes some time, a lot of time, and someone might recommend, hey, you should write a book and become an expert in that area so you're known for that one thing. Well, a book, (laughs) as I've gone through it and come to find, takes a long time. It takes about another year and a half. But that doesn't mean that you can't become known for your thing. I think the best way to do this is through starting a podcast and getting a website out there that can archive all the work and the content and the area of expertise that you want to be known for. Because you want to be the go-to guy when someone thinks of, hey, I want to get in really good shape, but heck, I don't know what it's going to take. And you know that your area of supremacy, as I dub it, is to get someone into really great shape. And what if you could bring on other influencers that already have a name for themselves online onto your own podcast to create content to rank in really well to be to be the go-to guy when it comes to being the enthusiast that you wish you were online to be the influencer that you wish you were online to be known as the expert if you look at what's been happening in the world it's all going towards online so if you're still running a business and overheads high, please reach out. Logan at LoganTylerNelson.com. And this is a service where it's a done-for-you podcast. We'll get you systematically hooked up to where you have a website, your podcast, and it really get you on the roll to where your job is just to come in and have the fun part, which is interviewing the experts that you wish you could align yourself with more and to start actually making some noise and disrupt this whole idea that it takes another year to get really known for your area of expertise. So if this at all interests you, just email me, logan at logantylernelson.com. Again, it's logan at logantylernelson.com. Oh, so true. Um, I've sent out so many emails with either a zero response or uh, get back to me when you're 100 episodes in, and then I get 100 episodes in, and they go, how many downloads do you have? And I go, uh, about uh, 5,000 a month. And they go, sorry, uh, I got to do a million a month. And, and that's the only... I'm like, what? Okay, uh, thank you for uh, for uh, nothing. <laughs> because, mm-hmm. like... You know, it does hurt. It does sting. But it, it it also, at the same time, it's kind of like you said, the reach for the, the stars mentality. Um, but, you know, I would really like to ask you this question. You know, based off of 
your desires and what you've achieved today. Um, because I, I believe so much in truth. What do you think you've actually desired based off of your desires versus the desires around you and what other people want for you? And um, how have you used tactics to kind of like go, no, this is truly what I want? Um, okay. So I think my desires have mostly been my own. I really, I guess that's part of how I was brought up. So my parents, uh, I mean, they they have been excellent. They still are. Um, so I think they, they raised me to kind of follow my passion and be my own person. And they never really forced anything on me. So I was able to explore all different kinds of things in life. So I don't really think I've, I've been doing anything for anyone else, if that's what you mean. I think that pretty much when I do something, it's for me. I mean, in terms of like my own career, I guess. I mean, you know what I mean? I can be a little bit more selfish in that way and not when it comes to family and personal relationships or whatever. And certainly there's more about other people involved there. Um, but I don't think I'm trying to live out somebody else's idea of what I should be doing at all. You know, that's just... I've, I, I started out as a, you know, with an accounting degree and then I became a therapist and then a journalist. So I'm following my own, my own path. No, I love it. Uh, I love it because the reason why I ask that question is because the area in which you are in, um, being surrounded by influence like this, it's really easy to be sort of, I think, caught in the, the sea. It's sort of like, oh, like I know for a fact that for four years, I went to a, a university where I was pretending to be somebody that I wasn't, which was an actor. And I still have traits of myself that I want to be an actor, but it, it wasn't the thing that was really making me happy. It wasn't the thing that was fulfilling me. It was it was sort of like the, uh, you know, grind it out until it hurts, and that's how you finally feel good. And I just don't believe in that anymore. I don't want to get my um, ass kicked before yeah. I, I feel a level of of, of uh, happiness. Do you know what I mean? I do. And I think that's maybe the difference. Like for me, I, I have the trouble sticking it out if, I don't, if I'm not happy. Like, or if I don't see a greater picture, a greater good or something in what I'm doing. So I'm sort of quick to, and I think that that's, it's a trade off, right? So it's, it's a a gift and it's a curse, right? So if I'm not happy doing something, odds are I am going to just pack it in and move on to the next thing. So that has helped me where I got, helped me get to where I am today. But also like, who knows where I, I could have been if I decided to only, you know, be an accountant or whatever. I probably would have been miserable to be honest, but maybe I'd be pretty darn successful by this point. I don't know. But to me, I don't, I just am not a believer for myself in just sitting and stewing and sucking it up. You only live once. Yeah. Oh, you only live, exactly. Um, YOLO. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I hate to forget that as something so like simplistic, but it's true. Like we have one life to live unless you believe that there are, you know, other lives. But, you know, if we have one life to live, like, let's just do it. You know, no regrets. Again, here I am with the hashtags. I feel like I'm, <laughs> I'm bringing up all these light um, mottos, but some of them really do hold true. They really do. Cliches are true for a reason. Um, I, mm -hmm. I've said that before, you know, thousands and thousands of times. I go, oh, okay, that makes sense. That's a, that's a cliche for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, hey, let's do some, so, like, just real quick, like, maybe, uh, you know, shed some skin on maybe a question that you were really afraid to ask a guest on your show um, and, and how that went for you. Okay, good question. So I do know that there are some topics. All right, I'm going to give you one. Since you mentioned him in the intro, let's go with Joe Montaigne. So Joe Montaigne was, he had a role in The Godfather Part 3. Now, I don't know if you're a fan of gangster films, but I am. And to me, The Godfather and The Godfather Part 2 are two of the all-time greatest films ever made. Hands down, without question. Now, I'll be totally honest, I don't want to bash it, but The Godfather Part 3 really just should not even be acknowledged as part of The Godfather series. It was such, it was really a travesty. So to me, since that was the only Godfather movie he was in, 
I had to ask him about that because that's the question. That's the, that's, that's how I feel about it. And I know that like a bazillion other people feel that way. So I felt as though going in to not address that, it's like the elephant in the room. I, I can't, I have to, um, I can't ignore it. So that I was a little bit like on the fence about beforehand thinking, uh, how do I, how do I even broach this topic? However, in fact, I, I interviewed, uh, Ray Seahorn. I'm not going off track, believe it or not, but I interviewed Ray Seahorn who, uh, plays Kim Wexler on the show, better call Saul, which is the prequel to, uh, breaking bad. And I was interviewing her a week or two before I talked to Joe Montana. And I even told her about it. I don't remember why we started talking about it. I think we were talking, we were talking about Al Pacino possibly. And I told her like, this, I have to bring this up. And she was like laughing, thinking that is the hardest thing to do. And, um, it sort of was. And in the moment I was like, okay, gotta do it. I'm going in. And I asked him about it and he, he answered it honestly. And, you know, I have to believe that I'm not the first person to think about that when talking to him. So hopefully he's prepared to talk about it. And he was, he said what he had to say, and I didn't argue with him about it. I didn't bash the movie in front of him. Um, but I did ask him like, what is it about the Godfather part three? Like, what do you think? What do people not understand? And he, he, he answered it, which was great. Oh, that would be, that would, uh, uh, that would freak me out too, because I'm sure there's so many, um, stories that you play inside your head before, you know, you're going to ask this question. Cause I mean, really that is, that's the hardest thing for an artist, I think, is is to disconnect themselves from their work. And and being an artist, I know what it's like to to be criticized on on something that you're involved with. Um, it's like being criticized on your on your inner 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 most scary demons. You know what I mean? And that just oh, um, so I. <laughs> well, look, I, as a I therapist, right, it's also my therapist training, right? Because you have to ask the hard questions, or at least go in those places that maybe aren't going to be comfortable, but they're important. They're important, and you can't if you ignore them you are doing the person a disservice. That's different than, you know, as a podcast host, I'm not doing him a disservice by ignoring it, but I'm doing my listeners a disservice by ignoring it. Um, but as a therapist, you've got to go into those difficult zones. It's the only way you're going to help the person. So mm -hmm. maybe that just having that, that experience probably helps me with those questions. And I don't think too much about it beforehand. Um, but I do think I know right away if I'm going to, if I need to hit on a topic that may make the person a little bit awkward, feel mm -hmm. a little awkward. Yeah. It's almost like, um, if you over prepare, you can actually freak yourself out uh, more than just being like, okay, I prepared enough. So where did you get that, that skill to sort of know that this is enough research that I've done on this person? Okay. I can let it go. I can now go into this interview knowing enough and to know how to carry on a conversation. And I'm sure there's people that are like, Oh, could you ask so-and-so this question for me? And it's like, uh, uh, sure. But at the same time, I also have my own agenda. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think it's a fine line. Like I do like to be prepared and I think a lot of my guests appreciate it when I have done the research. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want to come in with preconceived notions. So I really like to have it open. Like when somebody walks in, I don't want to think I know who they are already. Um, and so I also don't want to be too intimidated, I guess. So, you know, there are some big, big names. And so I, I don't know that doing the research actually makes me feel intimidated. I just think that it is, I like to do more than scratching the surface, but I do not dive too deep. I look for some interesting factoids that maybe I can ask about. Um, but then a lot of my interviews too, because they're conversational, they're, they're interviews, but they take more of a conversation, uh, tone that sometimes we'll just talk about other topics that have nothing to do with that person's history, say, for example. Um, and they'll just go in whatever direction they go in. So I do like to also leave it open for that. Uh, I did a record, I recorded an interview today, in fact, that went off on so many tangents. It was amazing. It was a great conversation. And then we looked at the clock and it was like, oh no, we're out of time. And I had not even asked him about the TV show he's on. 
So like that was like not, not great. So, but I do like to leave it open to that because sometimes I think the best conversations come from, um, just being in the moment. So the research is great, but I don't want to get hung up on, I have to ask this, this, and the other thing. And often by the end, I will be like, oh, I didn't get to ask her, or ask him about so-and-so or whatever. That's just how, just how it works. And I guess that's my style. It's not everybody's. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I, gosh, that's so cool. That's so, I, I actually think it's cooler that you didn't say anything about the movie because if you, now, now they might be just interested in learning what this person is actually doing now with their work rather than just going like, oh, uh, they told me all about the movie. Now I don't really need to see it. <laughs> you know, it might actually raise a level of curiosity that I think that wasn't really there before. Do you know well, what I mean? That's a, yes, that is a good point. And that sometimes I actually have to teach people about that. So, for example, some people come on the show and they want to promote whatever it is they have to promote whether it's a TV show or a book or what have you. And they might be nervous that we're not talking about that product only. Um, and if they're not familiar with the podcast, they may be surprised about that. If they are, they know that it's all about getting to know the real person. And honestly, that's how they're going to get people. That's how people are going to be interested in what they're doing. Because once they get to know the person who they really are, like in depth, they become fans for life. Like this happens a lot. I'll have somebody on the show and then listeners will suddenly be like following them on social media. My guests I'm talking about, um, my listeners will be following my guests on social media and they will be going to check out everything that they're doing and they will become fans for life. And that's not because my guest was like trying to hawk the latest show that, that she's in. It's because the listeners are like, really feel like, Oh my God, I really know this person. And I, I, I want to know more. Or I want to see more. So sometimes I do have to explain that, though, or to a publicist, publicist I may have to say, OK, um, we are going to promote so and so. I'm going to mention it in the intro. Um, but the conversation is going to be not just about that. I don't think that people are that interested, honestly, in hearing an in-depth conversation about a movie or a book that they have not yet seen or read. However, it is different if it's a show that's in process that they've been watching for a few seasons, then I think they love hearing us talk a lot about that show. Do you know what I mean? Hey, Logan Tyler Nelson here. I would so appreciate it if you took some time to hit the subscribe button. I really want to just honestly live and give. Why? Because I was told when I was young that if you're feeling down, the best way to feel better is by lifting someone up again. So in an effort to make someone feel less alone, please hit the subscribe button so the podcast has a better chance of being found and making someone feel less alone. And if you're feeling down, hey, it can help you. Know that by hitting that subscribe button, you just did someone a huge favor. So thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. I, I, that's a reason why I really like your show, and I think so many more people, I'm not alone in this, like shows that are actually in-depth with the process versus the final product of what a movie could be. More people are listening to podcasts. More people are consuming um, what it takes to actually make a movie, and they're more interested in that than they are the actual final product, which is so cool because we now have that ability to do that. Um, yeah. And so it's like, oh, wow, I just need to YouTube this or I need to find uh, Kara's podcast and listen to wh what happens behind the scenes because I'm more interested in that rather than, oh, that's how they got to Godfather. I'm more interested in kind of like, you know, we started this show with reverse engineering it and possibility hacking of how we can actually make that product too for ourselves in our own life. Sure, sure, um, totally. Totally. I want to go into um, what I call sort of scratching the surface curiosity questions where they're just uh, l learn a little bit more about you. And then later on, I'll do like some rapid fire sort of like 30 seconds or less type questions. Okay. Awesome. Sweet. So um, the first is a, kind of like a givings giving question because I mean, just the main purpose of it is to make someone feel you know, like they're not totally alone. So was there maybe a thought that you had about yourself 
that maybe you're embarrassed about having or ashamed, but you just know it's a thought and it's not who you actually are? Um, gosh, I want to give you a good answer to this, but nothing is, is popping up. Um, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> really? Yeah, I guess. I guess. I mean, you know, I hate to say I don't want to be like, oh, I'm the healthiest person ever because we're all, you know, we all have our issues. But I do feel like, again, I have to go back to my parents and, and like give them credit for I don't know what they did. They just like gave me a really balanced childhood. And um, I think I'm a pretty healthy person. And, you know, I don't want to apologize for it. But at the same time, I don't want to be like, oh, life is so perfect all the time. It's not like that. It's not that life is perfect. But I think I'm pretty balanced in my approach to it and how I feel about myself. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Can I, can I say one for me and then maybe it'll kind of inspire you? Sure. Okay. So um, today I saw a personal trainer and I thought she was a little overweight and I was thinking to myself, what gives her a, even inkling or an ounce of thought that she could ever teach someone how to lose weight when her, she herself can't even lose weight? And I'm a little emotional about this because I felt bad for thinking this thought. But then I go and I re-question and I go, that thought isn't really that helpful. So, Logan, people are sometimes playing certain roles. She is a good coach and she's going to get that person into a position and motivate her even though yet she hasn't been there, but that's her role in this in this current situation is just to motivate and inspire and give that person tools to get to the to the spot they want to get to. So, um yeah, I don't know if that helps at all. Okay, well that gave me a thought, like it did trigger a thought, but it's so not going to be the kind of answer that you would like because it's really kind of foolish. But it just because we're I'm fresh off this podcast interview that I just taped earlier today, and I was talking about this writer. Um, he's actually I forget his name already, but he wrote the he wrote Friday Night Lights, the book actually. Um, he's the author. And I don't think he, oh, he might've written this screenplay for the movie as well. So I was telling my guest that I was listening to a podcast where the author was a guest. And I was saying that like, it was kind of a boring podcast, sort of a boring episode. And then I was kind of already regretting that I even said that it was boring. But, um, and then I said, well, you know, I mean, he's probably, he's a writer, so that's probably his thing. You know, he's just have, doesn't have to be entertaining. And then I said, why am I saying that all writers are not entertaining? Like, this is really, I told you, it's not a good example. I'm sorry, Logan. That's all I could come up with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, you're perfect. It worked out. <laughs> I think that's, um, it's just, it gives proof that sometimes we are our own worst critics when it's stuck inside of our head and then we actually get it outside of our head and we look at it and we analyze it and we go, okay. Um, yeah. I can I can give you another, actually another example, maybe slightly better, though not much better. So sometimes I will be editing a podcast interview and I will hear myself sound like such a fool. And I'll be like, why did you say that? Or like, oh my God, that is ridiculous. Like I need to edit that out right now. But then I will check myself and I will say, nope, this is like, this is the real me. And I do not want my guests to be polished, right? That's my big thing is like, be who you really are and I will help you get there. Um, so I cannot do it for myself either. So I may cringe at myself, but then I do just kind of reverse my thinking consciously and say, nope, keeping it in, keeping it in. Mm, yeah, thank you. That was, that, was, uh, that was beautiful. I'm sure <laughs> someone who's listened to this show has probably been like, he should have edited that. But he did. <laughs> and so I um I totally get it. And it's funny because when I use other people's work and I hear them say an um, you know, in, in their answer, I go, Oh, I'll edit them. <laughs> uh, I don't want them to sound stupid or something like that. I don't want them to feel stupid when they listen to this. But um for me it's like I just rather be as real as possible just because there are so many illusions online. But um the next question I do want to ask you. Um, now going into sort of like, cause that was a longer question that I, I didn't think we were going to go on for so long. So I want to go into these okay. sort of like 30 seconds or less, uh, type answers if you're up for that. Sure. I'm up for it. Awesome. So, um, the first question is, who would you love to sit on a bench with 
and why? And I know that's actually uh, really hard for you particularly to answer this because you've sat on benches, I'm sure, with very, very many people that uh, you've wanted to talk to and actually succeeded in that area. So, No, I have so many. And it's really, it's like related, it's podcast related. So I'm sure there are other people outside of like uh, famous people who I would like to sit on a bench with. But only because this is coming to mind, I'm going to say Ethan Hawke, comma, Sylvester Stallone, comma, Tom Cruise, comma, which reminds me of John Travolta. Um, uh, and many, many others. So I wasn't going to do this, but can you do any impressions of these actors just because like you're around them and you're researching them and like impressions is one of the things that I used to do and just because I was listening to them so much, I thought I could actually understand them on a deeper level if I learned an impression from them. Um, no, I, that is a skill I do not have. <laughs> you're welcome to do an impression of anybody I've had already interviewed, but that is not one of my skills. Oh, no. I mean, I could probably do Tom Cruise like a little bit, but not really well. The, like, you are beautiful. That's all I could do. That's like, That is excellent. I love it. <laughs> well you. done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Wait, was that a quote from Jerry Maguire? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Was or, it? Yeah. I mean, Something I can else. do Sylvester Stallone too. Okay. But no. I, I, go on. I, go for it. Okay. All right. Um, uh, you go, uh, they, uh, they say, uh, you sly, uh, how'd you, uh. How'd you get in such good shape? You're 60 years old and you're still in good shape. And I say, oh, I, uh, I ate my greens, I uh, ate my eggs, and uh, yeah, I took steroids. Steroids, uh, I took a lot of them. Uh, but yeah, oh, yeah I'm, I'm in the ring. I'm in the ring and I'm doing it and it's, it's who I am and I don't care. I don't care who's who's going to talk crap about me because yo, 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 Kara. She's got a good, she's got a good heart on her shoulder too, and I'm excited for her to make me look as as great, even though I'm 60 years old. And uh, you know, we don't have to talk about steroids at all on our show, but I can't wait to talk to her. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was bad. Uh, I haven't done those in forever. Love it. Um, <laughs> I do too. Uh, and also at the same time, it's like those weird, those moments where you judge yourself after not doing something for a very long time. Don't judge yourself. It was entertaining. And even if it wasn't good for you for doing it, but it was. <laughs> but it was. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Yeah. So the next question I got for you is, uh, how do you like to consume content yourself? Do you do it through audiobooks, books, movies, podcasts? How, how do you consume your content today? All of the above, except for audiobooks. I cannot do audiobooks. I don't know why they bother me. I will hear somebody telling a story and I will, it will be like nails on a chalkboard. I do not like it. I love podcasts. So I don't understand why I don't like that. But I also, some of it may have to do with, I'm going to, I'm going to bring up Anthony Bourdain. So I know that he recently committed suicide and it's awful. And I was so devastated as well as so many other people, but he's coming to mind. And I, I sort of don't know if this is really even an appropriate thing to bring up at this time, but it is something that I heard that I used to think about. He, I think was an excellent writer, like incredible. Sometimes I would hear him on one of his shows and I could tell that he was reading his writing. So he was like reading a script and it didn't seem like he was naturally talking. And I really disliked it, even though I liked him a lot. And I liked his writing a lot. I did not like listening to him reciting his writing. So that may have something to do with why I don't like audiobooks. It's the same kind of thing. I don't know why. It just doesn't sound natural, maybe. You know, I'm the same way. I am the same way. I, it's odd that you say that because I, I can listen to a three-hour long Joe Rogan episode. Or, you know, in your case, sometimes you have hour-long episodes. No problem. But when it comes to an audiobook, I have to like really, really work on just doing 20 minutes at a time. Otherwise, I just get kind of bored and um, <laughs> not. Yeah, Logan, really I'm continue. talking two minutes, Logan. I can't listen for two minutes. I am done. I'm like, cannot do it. So I would much rather read it. And by the way, I prefer to read like a physical print book. Love regular books. Holding them in my hand, 
but I prefer paperbacks because they are not as bad on my neck muscles. I love it. So what are you <laughs> currently reading slash what are you what podcast are you currently um, just loving as of late? Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go with podcast. The podcast I've been I it's really not even a new one for me. One of the podcasts that I fell in love with from the very beginning is Mark Marin's WTF podcast. I love it. So he does a lot of what I do. He does these very in-depth uh, dis- conversations with mostly famous people. And, um, at the beginning I didn't love it because I felt like a lot of it was about him instead of the other person, but I have seen him over the years or listened to him over the years develop as an interviewer. And I think he is fantastic. And I feel as though I could just, I know the guest when he's done. So that's sort of my goal too, you know, not to be a knockoff of Mark Marin at all because our styles are totally different. Um, but I appreciate how he approaches his guests and that I can really feel like I'm listening to, um, you know, something relevant about the person and not just them trying to sell me something. So not a new obsession, just a long time obsession. And I don't believe it or not. I don't listen to a million podcasts. Um, I have my favorites and I listen to them over and over again, not old episodes, but current episodes, whatever's released. That's awesome. And then any favorite book that you're currently uh, checking out? Yeah, I'm like not I ha- I'm like in a lull. I don't have a great book that I'm in the middle of. And sometimes when I'm not um, when I don't have a great one, then I'll just like it'll be a little while before I pick up another great one. And then like once I'm sucked in again, then great. I keep going. But right now, nothing. Awesome. Uh, I totally get you. It's uh, it kind of goes along with that theme that we've had Um you know, okay, I got this question uh, that I don't usually ask, but it's it's for you. Let's say someone really wants to get someone famous on their show, and they're like, I do not know how to get this person's email. I, I You know, I don't know how to get to their Instagram even, because it's like I try to message them, and I just see crickets. It doesn't work. Uh, Twitter doesn't work. What has been, like, the best uh, resource for you to, to reach out to someone and, and maybe get their uh, contact information? Well, I don't think it's about getting contact information like and cold calling anybody. So I feel like that's not really I don't think anybody's going to I'm talking about celebrities specifically. So I don't think celebrities are going to want to just get a cold call email from anybody. Um, Are we out? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I just um, got a little notice on my computer. Um, Look like we're getting kicked off, but I'm good. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I don't know how much you edit these out, but hopefully you could just edit that little bit out. Um, So as far as celebrities, like that's not the way to do it. I don't think that like finding their secret email address is the way to go. Um, For me, it's all about, again, I have contacts in the industry and I have, I've known a lot of these people for a while. So that's for me. But in terms of other people who want a guest on their show, like if somebody wanted me to be a guest on their show, then, um, you know, again, I don't even remember. How did we get in touch? I forget. But like Instagram. some people, Instagram. Okay. So not everybody is, is, uh, getting in touch or listening to, or looking at their, um, their private messages or whatever, but some people are. So again, it's that shoot for the stars, just try it. But I don't really have a secret way of here's how you're going to get in touch with a, uh, with a guest and here's what's going to make them say yes. I think it's different for everybody. And for me, it was just a matter of like a lot of time and a lot of trust building. Mm. Okay. No, this is good. This is this is really good information because I think it can eventually lead to maybe, you know, having that huge star on your show because I think it's so much uh I guess delicious too when you really know that you work for it. Like uh oh, you know, hey, I had to cook this meal before just like going to a fast food restaurant and just you know, eating it and going all right, well, um, that wasn't as delicious as that home-cooked meal. So if anyone kind of agrees with me on that level, uh, that'd be cool <laughs> because yeah. you know what I mean. Um, anyway, I just have two more questions because I, okay. I don't want to keep you forever and I don't want to keep anybody listening forever and ever and ever because I know that after this interview they can really actually change their life and scratch their own itch by taking some of these uh, awesome, valuable uh insights that you've given us already so the second to last question i like to ask is i'm gonna can i jump can i jump in for a second and just say something as a therapist you can jump in okay and you're you're right anybody listening 
can make changes to their life. Like no matter what, there are going to be obstacles, but it doesn't mean you can't make a change. Like we all have the power to do it. There may be obstacles and you may need resources to help you get through them, but nothing is like written in stone that this is what, what you're stuck with in life. So if you want to make a change or you want to do something different, definitely you can. You just have to figure out how and find the resources to help you. Sorry, had to had to stick that in there as a therapist. No, I thank you so much for saying that. I, <laughs> I like seriously, uh, seriously, uh, virtual hug. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, because I, it just needs to be said. I say in the beginning, my intros are always about uh, this is uh, a show about the things we think about a lot and need to talk about more. So I think that was uh, a little piece of that, exactly that, you know, you can get into the position of feeling better. And, and even if you are doing good and you feel like life is going well, there's always a way to increase opportunity. And so I think you've done that throughout this whole entire show is just being able to give people tools where they can increase their opportunities. Cool. So, um, okay. Second to last question. Yes. So the second to last question is, where's the one place more people can find Kara Mayer Robinson? At reallyfamouspodcast.com, I have links to everything, but obviously there's the podcast, so Ooh, you just, can find... Just, just one place, because let's... Oh, not, just one place? Yeah, just the one place, because I don't want to confuse anybody. That's a you good point. I mean? yeah. So I'm going to send everyone to reallyfamouspodcast.com. Awesome. It's all there. Sweet. And I will throw that in the show notes. And so it's a simple scroll of your of your finger or your mouse, whatever tool you're using. You click on that link and you'll be forwarded to there. The last question I like to ask is, um, I think questions actually are way, way better than answers. So what's a self-inquisitive question someone can kind of ask themselves throughout the day to sort of maybe um, unlock something that they're struggling with right now? Okay. Why is this bothering me so much? I know it sounds like a simple question, but it will really get your juices flowing and turn things around so that the focus is on what may be bothering you a little bit deeper. Does that make sense? Perfect. I don't know the answer for everyone, but I guarantee if they do actually do the work and answer that, I think it'll do a tremendous help for them to get to the next step and then go, oh, this is the next step that I got to take. And it'll kind of lead them down that rabbit hole. So please, if you do have the opportunity to ask yourself this question and you answer it and you send it to Kara's uh, where you can f find her podcast and you actually do send it to her and screenshot it of an answer, I'll, uh, I will send you a little treat um, and you just got to guess, you got to find out what that treat is by doing the work. <laughs> so, um, I can't wait until you do so. Uh, Kara, this has been like so much fun. I, I loved what you said. Uh, the stories, the insights. Um, I really hope we don't disconnect forever after this. Uh, but yeah, so far, uh, thank you. Cool. It was my pleasure, Logan. Great questions. And thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. <laughs> There's another episode of Scratch Your Own Itch. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to support the show by listening. Um, the biggest compliment you could ever pay me is just by sharing this because honestly, it doesn't take much and it feels so good when people create something and take time. And when I see someone take time to create something that really just changed my day either made me feel less alone, made me put a smile on my face, made me laugh, made me feel wiser. I always want to share it with the world because why? When I share something that resonates with me, why not share it? I mean, that's just kind of the thing that goes around and it's free. It takes no time at all other than just a click of the button, share. On either Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, 
any of those social media platforms would be great to share this. So I really appreciate it. And I want to say that um, anybody who's looking to gain authority or expertise in their area and they don't want to take another year or year and a half to write a book and wait until that's published, I think the best way is right now is to start a podcast. So if you're at all interested in starting a podcast, if you meet the certain requirements, I'd love to help you with a podcast and also get a website going for you as well. And this is not an easy task. It's hard to actually get it done and get it out there. So every now and then we need some help and I'm here for you. So please reach me at Logan at LoganTylerNelson.com if you're interested at all. And don't ever forget, you matter and you're enough.